All right, I've got the Panasonic AG7200 anamorphic adapter lens here, which has a 1.33x squeeze, which when attached to a 4.3 imager will produce a 16.9 true anamorphic image, or when attached to an imaging sensor that's already 16.9 will produce a true 2.35 anamorphic image with no cropping. So this is going to be a tutorial on how to attach this anamorphic adapter lens, which was originally designed for the DBX100, onto almost any lens front that has a focal length of 35 millimeter or longer. And the way this is done is very simple. It's just through a series of step up or step down rings that screw in the back. Now one of the first things you should know about operating this adapter is this set screw over here, which controls the rotation of the lens block unit. So when this screw over here is tightened, the back unit does not rotate. When it's loosened, the back block rotates. Now this might seem counterintuitive at first, but you'll realize that when this is loose and it's on the front of the lens, you can rotate it to set the image to be level and squared up. Another thing to note here is that this rear filter ring is recessed, so it's very difficult to attach a lens without some kind of step-up ring or extension tube. And in this case, what I'm using is a 77 millimeter to 72 millimeter step-down ring, and this has a 72 millimeter female thread on the front that attaches to the adapter, and a 77 millimeter male thread on the back which will attach to the front of whatever lens you're using. So this ring screws on pretty easily right onto the back of the adapter. And once it's attached, you now have enough clearance here to screw on any lens that has a 77 millimeter front thread. So what I have here is a 49 to 77 millimeter step up ring. It's got a 77 millimeter female thread on the front and a 49 millimeter thread on the back because I want to attach a lens that has a 49 millimeter thread on the front. So I just screw this on here, effectively creating a 77 millimeter front for this lens. So now this is the same step up ring. I'm just showing you it attaches 77 to 77 and it just screws right on in snug like that. And so now once that's screwed in and you tighten it up, make sure it's tight back there, you effectively have an anamorphic adapter block that now has a 49 millimeter back thread will allow you to screw your 49 millimeter lens right onto the anamorphic adapter. Now this is the closest you can get the front element to the back of the adapter, which I believe is what you want to do. Once you do that, the block right there is done and you have a focusable lens and it's pretty lightweight so you can focus easily, even on the Helios. This is attached to a film SLR and you can see it's crooked on the front, so this is a demonstration of the set screw. You just loosen the set screw, rotate it till it's squared up, tighten the set screw once it's square, and that's it. You're ready to go. Focusable uh, through most of the range. Anamorphic does have some limitations when it comes to focus, uh, but I'm not going to go into those. So to take this off, you just tighten that set screw on the front, unscrew the lens from the front threads, and there you go. You now have the anamorphic adapter and your adapted filter threads. You can just take that off. And this is essentially the three components. So you need step up rings, the adapter unit, and then a prime lens or whatever you're attaching it to. Now, here's a different lens, a Nikon that has 77 millimeter front threads. So I can just take this step down ring that's already 77 millimeter on the back, screw that onto the front threads of this Nikon, which are also 77. And now the front threads are 72, and this can screw in with enough clearance, make sure that screw is tight, onto this Nikon lens, and it goes on pretty snug. And the elements do not uh, scratch one another, they clear perfectly with this particular configuration. And once that's done, just square up the lens. Now, if you happen to save the front cap for the anamorphic adapter, that'll actually come in handy because it's a tool for centering or squaring up the front of the lens. It's got a little square etched in the front there, and when you put the cap on, if your lens is wide enough, you can see that square. Now, if you don't have it, don't worry about it, but uh, if you do, I'll show you how this works. So I've got my lens cap on my anamorphic adapter, which is on my Nikon Zoom, which is on the 5D Mark II that's recording this. And stopping down on the lens helps to make that square pattern appear. What I'm doing is rotating the front anamorphic block until it squares up, 
Once that's done, just take the cap off and zoom into 35 millimeter or longer, refocus the lens, and you're done. Now here's a trick if you don't have the front cap for the anamorphic. Just take a strong light, and this is easier to do indoors. Point it directly at the lens until you see that horizontal flare. It's probably going to be blue. And just rotate that block until the flare, the horizontal flare, looks about level. And that's it. You should be level. And finally, here's a test with the lenses you've seen in the video, the 28-70 Nikon and the 58 Helios a comparison with and without anamorphic.